Have you ever wondered how an unknown young man managed to write the greatest military treatise in Chinese history? What legendary story lies behind this work of only over 6,000 characters? The familiar sayings we often hear, such as, Know thyself, know thy enemy, and you shall not be defeated in a hundred battles, and, Attack the enemy's unpreparedness, and emerge victorious, all come from the same book, The Art of War, by Sun Tzu. Born in the spring and autumn period 2,500 years ago, it is not only the earliest surviving military treatise in China but also the world's oldest military work. Praised as the foremost military book and the sacred scripture of military studies, despite its concise length of just over 6,000 characters, it contains profound strategies and wisdom. China possesses numerous precious cultural treasures, and as an integral part of it, the art of warfare plays an indispensable role. China is not lacking in military ideas, in fact, there are over 4,000 treatises on warfare. Yes, that's right, there are so many, which demonstrates the rich diversity of China's military wisdom. Some famous treatises include the Seven Military Classics, compiled by Emperor Shenzong of the Northern Song Dynasty. It lists seven important works on warfare, with The Art of War, Taking the Lead, followed by The Art of Wu, The Method of Sima, Li Wei Gong's Questions and Answers, The Discourses of Wei Liao, The Three Strategies of Huang Shi Gong, and The Six Secret Teachings. Furthermore, we have also heard of the Wang Ungshi Reform, which took place during his dynasty, and one of the achievements of this reform was the establishment of military studies, or what we would call a modern-day Royal Military Academy. In order to educate students, textbooks were naturally needed, thus giving rise to the seven military classics I mentioned earlier. From The Art of War being the foremost among the seven classics, we can catch a glimpse of its elevated status in the realm of military treatises. Sun Tzu didn't write a lot throughout his life, he only left us with a concise 6,075 Chinese characters. We all know that quantity does not necessarily equate to quality, and brevity does not necessarily indicate inadequacy. It is precisely because of the abstract and minimalist nature of the art of war that it possesses its unique characteristics. It doesn't waste words, which makes it exceptionally challenging to comprehend. However, it is precisely this succinct style that gives the art of war its distinctive charm. The Art of War is not only a must-read military guide for military strategists throughout the ages, but its fundamental principles have also permeated various fields such as business competition, corporate management, sports competitions, and diplomatic negotiations. As a treasure of China's classical military culture heritage, it is an indispensable part of China's excellent traditional culture. However, little is known about its author, Sun Tzu, and many people even confuse him with Sun Bin, another military strategist. How did he write this extraordinary book? What hidden legendary stories are concealed in his life's journey? And what values are worth our deep contemplation? Let's delve into the mysterious world of Chinese military culture and uncover the unique status and value of the art of war. Let us bravely face this extraordinary masterpiece and together experience the brilliance of wisdom it holds. Are you ready? Let us embark on a journey to trace the footsteps of history and decipher the true meaning of this military treatise. Let me introduce you to a remarkable figure named Sun Tzu. In fact, Sun Tzu's full name is Sun Wu, so why is he referred to as Sun Tzu? In ancient China, esteemed men were often addressed as Zi, which means master or teacher. We are familiar with other renowned figures like Confucius, Zhuangzi, and so on. Sun Tzu is an extraordinary individual, and what makes him unique? Firstly, despite his young age, he was able to write such an outstanding work that has guided military theory in ancient and even modern times. Even today, people continue to study his writings.
For example, in institutions like the United States Military Academy at West Point and the National Defense University, the art of war is included as part of their elective courses. Secondly, despite the vast number of ancient Chinese texts, information about Sun Tzu is exceedingly scarce. In official historical records, only Sima Qian's Records of the Grand Historian mentions Sun Wu in the chapter titled Biography of Sun Wu, and even then, it consists of a mere 406 Chinese characters. Even in unofficial historical accounts, there are limited references to Sun Tzu. This has made Sun Tzu's background a mystery. Let me tell you the story found in the Biography of Sun Wu, which contains the episode of Wu Gong Instructs the Army. The story takes place at an unspecified time, as Sima Qian does not provide specific details in Biography of Sun Wu. What we know is that it happened in the state of Wu, and there was a young man named Sun Wu. He wrote a book that caught the attention of the King of Wu. The king, who was the 24th ruler of the state, was a highly capable monarch. Under his rule, the state of Wu became a dominant power, comparable to the status of one of the permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. The king wanted to witness Sun Tzu's talent firsthand, so he requested that Sun Tzu engage in practical training. However, the individuals chosen for training were quite unique, they were all palace maids, totaling 180 in number, divided into two teams. The king designated his two consorts as the team leaders. Sun Tzu stood before them and asked, Do you know where the heart is? Where is your left hand? Where is your right hand? Which direction is your back? The palace maids found this question amusing because who wouldn't know these basic facts? They responded with giggles and bashful answers, saying, yes, we know. Sun Tzu remained composed and continued to teach them the proper movements. When I command, look forward, your eyes should be directed to the front of your heart. When I say, turn back, you should turn toward your back. Turn left, you should turn in the direction of your left hand. Turn right, you should turn in the direction of your right hand. Do you understand? After explaining the movements in detail, Sun Tzu requested that the soldiers bring in instruments of punishment. The palace maids laughed at the sight, thinking it was all just a game and not taking it seriously at all. You can imagine the results. When Sun Tzu shouted, right, they turned left, when he ordered, stand at attention, they relaxed. After a period of training with no effect, Sun Tzu realized where the problem lay and said, this is my fault, I did not make myself clear. I will explain again. Subsequently, Sun Tzu once again taught them the required movements, but the palace maids continued to play and laugh. It dawned on Sun Tzu that it was not a matter of them not understanding or him not teaching properly but rather a lack of reverence and seriousness on their part. So Sun Tzu said, the lack of discipline and unfamiliarity with commands are my mistakes as an officer. Since I have clearly explained the discipline and commands, but you fail to follow them, the fault lies with you. He then inquired of the military judge what punishment should be given to those who do not obey orders. The military judge replied that it was a serious offense, punishable by beheading. Sun Tzu then ordered the soldiers to take out the two team leaders, who happened to be the king's consorts, and publicly execute them. The king witnessed this scene from the platform and realized that Sun Tzu was truly going to execute his beloved consorts. He hurriedly shouted, I now understand that you are capable of training soldiers. Please stop. If you kill my two beloved consorts, I will lose all joy in life. However, Sun Tzu, in a serious tone, replied, as a general, on the battlefield, I can choose to obey or disobey the king's orders. He insisted on executing the king's two beloved consorts. After the two consorts were killed, the palace maids' ranks immediately became orderly. They realized that the training was no longer a mere game but genuine military training, 
where mistakes could cost them their lives. When Sun Tzu issued commands again, the movements of the palace maids became precise. They turned in the exact direction they were instructed. Sun Tzu achieved his training objective, and the palace maid's formation resembled that of a disciplined regular army. Sun Tzu was satisfied with this outcome and informed the king that the troops had been successfully trained and were ready for battle. However, the king, unhappy due to the death of his two consorts, did not wish to stay on the platform any longer and asked Sun Tzu to leave and rest. Sun Tzu realized that the king liked his book but did not genuinely embrace his training methods and military perspectives. So, Sun Tzu spoke, saying, It seems that your majesty only appreciates my book but does not sincerely adopt my training methods and military viewpoints. After saying these words, Sun Tzu departed. The king realized his mistake in driving away Sun Tzu after having him conduct the training, where Sun Tzu successfully transformed the palace maids into true soldiers. Thus, the king quickly acknowledged his error and appointed Sun Tzu as the Grand Marshal. Sun Tzu proved his capabilities by leading the state of Wu to victory in numerous wars, establishing Wu as a deserving hegemonic power. That was the story of, Wu Gong instructs the army, that I shared, and it is the only account recorded in the, records of the Grand Historian. Our video for this episode is coming to an end. Thank you all for listening to my narration, and I hope you have gained a deeper understanding of, The Art of War, by Sun Tzu and the story of Sun Tzu. If you are interested in, The Art of War, Chinese History, and Strategic Thinking, I sincerely invite you to subscribe to my channel and not miss any of the exciting videos. We will continue to explore more fascinating stories and knowledge. In the next video, I will share my interpretation of the profound meaning behind, Wu Gong instructs the army, and Sun Tzu's unique insights into warfare. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.